Okay, welcome back um, to the next talk, Pioneering the Future of Computing Education. And please welcome from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, Ben Nuttall. Hi everyone, thanks for coming to the talk. I hope you're enjoying Euro Python as much as I am. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, so, I'm from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. My name is Ben Nuttall. I, I'm a developer and I work in on the education team as well. So I, uh, I'm responsible for the website, the Raspberry Pi website. I do um, other development work and writing educational material and, and I do outreach and talks and things like that. Uh, so what is Raspberry Pi? So I've got one here. So it's a single board computer that runs Linux from an SD card. It has USB ports and HDMI. The idea is you just plug it into your TV, plug in a mouse and keyboard and program, um, and you can use it as a, a normal desktop computer to a certain extent. So why Raspberry Pi? So why did they, why did they come up with this device? Um, the thing is, this is a BBC Micro computer, and the idea of this was that you would plug it into your TV, and you would get a programming environment straight away. And that's exactly what the Raspberry Pi was supposed to be. So the thing is, we used to have computers like that that you could program. Now I have computers like this that you can just, you just, it's just a magic box and it just works. You wave your hands around and things happen. Uh, that's making us stupid. As great as that, that is, that technology, we're not learning how to make these things, we're just learning how to use them. So the Raspberry Pi is a foundation, it's a char UK charity, has a board of trustees that manage its direction. And there are two sides of it, like any, like most charities, they kind of split into two at some point. There's a trading company, so that's the engineers, it's run, run by Evan Upton. Um, that's, a, that's a bunch of people who bring in money. They make money, they give it to us, and we spend it. I'm on the foundation side, that's the fun side. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we hire ex-teachers, we hire developers who want to work on the educational material, and as I say, we spend the money that the engineers bring in. So this is the foundation, and uh, it was set up in 2009 uh, by a group of people at Cambridge University. They were trying to essentially make a modern day BBC Micro, something you just plug in and you would get, it was gonna be originally just gonna be a Python prompt at the at boot. So you plug it into your TV, you would have a Python prompt, you would have a keyboard, you would just, it would just be learning programming in a basic environment. And as you can see, there's a few examples of the prototypes there, the one on the, the right here. Um, that was a, almost like a USB stick, sort of kind of size device. Uh, that was just USB one side, HDMI the other side, and it was just gonna be a programming environment with Python. The one in the middle that Evan is holding was a sort of prototype of a, a whole single board computer. Uh, which eventually became the one on the right there, uh, which is the, the original Raspberry Pi Model B. Uh, and, and in that time, um, the, the entire foundation's mission was just to get the board into production, make it a, a reality. And then from 2012, so the beginning of 2012, when the Raspberry Pi went on sale, and they had 10,000 Raspberry Pis waiting to be, waiting to be bought, um, they sold 100,000 on the first day. Uh, so it was a little bit more, um, there's a lot more interest than was anticipated. And that was just from having a, a WordPress blog saying, yeah, we're gonna make this cool thing that's gonna do Python and it'll teach kids code. Um, a lot of people were saying, hey, this is really cool. They're gonna make a $35 computer. I want one of those. And they, they all tried to get one. Uh, I was there at that time trying to, to order a Raspberry Pi on the uh, on the 20, 29th of February, the leap day year in 2012. Uh, and so we had Evan going around in this, this first sort of year, uh, year or two, going around giving talks, telling people about, about what Raspberry Pi was about. Um, we had Liz, uh, who was managing the blog and Twitter and doing a great job of promoting everything we were, we were trying to do at the time. Um, we, we announced a new, the new model, which was an anticipated um, a new development, the Model A, so that was the cheaper, uh, less powerful um, version of the original Raspberry Pi, so it just, it's just the same with only one USB and without Ethernet. 
We had Clive Beale join the team. He's uh, the guy on the on the end here. He he sort of formed the first sort of iteration of the the, founda the foundation's educational team. He went around giving talks uh, about how you can use Raspberry Pi in school. We had some funding from Google, um, who wanted to push these devices in, into schools around the UK, and where we have a whole load of those that, we're, that we've been giving out to schools. We also brought out a, the first official product, to uh, add-on product for the Raspberry Pi, the camera module. And then there was a second iteration of that, which with the infrared filter removed, the camera, uh, the Pi Noir, uh, as that was something people were asking for. And then also in, um, uh, I think it was late 2012, we moved production of all Raspberry Pis from China to the UK. So we were really kind of proud to be able to say all the Raspberry Pis you, you, you buy now are made in one factory, uh, one Sony factory in Wales in the UK. Um, and, and then af after the Raspberry Pi became available and it was out there in the wild, this whole community just came out of nowhere. And it was a real kind of amalgamation of everything from the existing hackers who were already used to these kind of dev boards but paying a lot more money for them. Uh, people like myself who were uh, programmers and attending user groups and really interested in the tech community that way. And a whole host of people in between. And there was all these new kids, uh, parents, teachers, all trying to get involved in, in what Raspberry Pi was about. Uh, all these books and magazines start sprouting up, loads of things on Kickstarter, trying to uh, further it, loads of add-on boards, people were doing robotics and all sorts of things. And there were all these other, all these people out there just making things with Raspberry Pi, and our blog was, was just full of these amazing projects. There were, there's a guy sending them into space to take pictures of the Earth, as you can see there. Absolutely amazing. I would definitely recommend you go and check his stuff out. Uh, he's called Dave Ackerman. If you search for um, pie in the sky, you'll find a lot of cool stuff. Uh, there was a load of, this is just an example, a load of robotics projects and all sorts of things people, people were doing with Raspberry Pis uh, early on. So then, in, from 2014 onwards, this is the point where, okay, we've sold an awful lot of these things, we've got a lot of money coming in. Uh, we'd ori they'd originally said they weren't, we weren't going to do sort of teacher training and education material, we're going to leave that to the community. Um, but you know, we got to a point where we're in a position where we can actually do, do a lot of that. So what have we done so far this year? So we brought out this. This is the industrial version of the Raspberry Pi. It's the, uh, the industrial compute module. It's, it's a Raspberry Pi in the form factor of a RAM chip. So it's a sodium connect connector. Uh, it slots into a dev board like this, and you use this as a prototype as your, of your industrial product. product. Um, that's a really, really cheap and very accessible dev board that you can get there that will fund, you know, the money comes into us and we, that will be used to fund the educational mission of the, of the charity. We hit a major milestone recently and we announced three million sales of Raspberry Pis, which is really cool. And just last week we announced the Model B+, Plus, uh, the first upgrade, to, well, the second upgrade, should I say, to the original Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's got extra USB ports, extra GPIO pins. It now has 40. It's got improved power um, power consumption, so it will, it will use less power, and it um, it deals with, with with that a lot more sensibly. We moved the composite for the for for an analog TV onto the headphone jack, so it's just just there on the one side, and it now takes a micro SD card. Um, and the best thing about this is that the price is the same. It's uh, still $35. Um, so most notably about, you know, sort of specific uh, related to this talk is that um, we formed an education team this year. So I joined at the end of 2013. Clive was already there. This is Carrie Ann, um, Carrie Ann Philbin, who's the author of one of the books that I mentioned that the community brought out. She's an ex-teacher, as is Clive. And uh, we've got a couple of other guys who are in this, you know, the same sort of mix of background. One's, one was a teacher, another was a developer like myself. Um, we're coming together now and um, doing a lot of things. So we've got Pi Academy, which is our teacher training course that we now run. We do about one every month or two at the moment. So we, get, we invite teachers to apply, and it's free CPD for teachers. Uh, and it's now open to teachers around the world. Uh, they come in for two days training, 
of getting used to all the different things you can do with Raspberry Pi in the classroom and helping them overcome any problems they've had, classroom logistics, that kind of thing, and get them introduced to it and uh, in a nice kind of way that they, they all realize they're in the same boat and that they, they can get over these problems. And I was hired to uh, take on the website. So previously, we just had a simple blog just showing the information um, of what people were doing with Raspberry Pis around the world, all the projects that we could find, curated that all on our blog, uh, which was fantastic in content, but what we really needed was, um, was all the stuff this, this new website brought. So we now have educational resources on the website. We have help guides on all that kind of thing in a more accessible way. So this is our resources page. We have them in three categories, teach, learn, and make. So there's things for teachers to take and actually just give, give them, um, uh, give, give classes based on this, uh, teaching computing concepts and, and that kind of thing. Um, and they have all, all, the, all the stuff teachers need um, to, to, to deliver the UK curriculum. Um, they have kind of uh, learning objectives and all the, all the kind of things that, you know, are related to the curriculum that, that teachers need. Uh, learn are things like just, a, you know, a, do do this exercise, you know, kind of learn learn about this this topic, and then make is kind of building things or or, or making some sort of interactive application. They're all free to use um, and, and free in, in the in the liberty sense. So they're all uh, Creative Commons licensed, so you can do whatever you like with those. We don't want to put any restrictions on teachers to say they can't print them or can't photocopy them or can't edit them or or whatever they want. So we just uh, they're all out there, you know, for anyone to use for any purpose, um, and we encourage them to sort of edit them and make make their own resources out of our, our materials. They're all um, on GitHub, so we have collaborators working on them um, around the world who file issues if they if they have any problems with them. They they can edit them, they can fork them, and we're encouraging teachers to get to get involved in in sharing in this way as well. So some of our resources, just, just by a few examples, uh, we've got a, uh, a new one that's, that's being worked on at the moment is uh, using a, a, a Morse code uh, tapper. And we've got a, we've got a Python interface to, um, to typing messages in, using that with Morse code. And you learn how to build up that program um, through a few steps of build, building it up, um, which we'll be releasing soon. We've got a, um, an infrared bird box using the, the camera noir. Um, so you can actually have a, wet, a feed, a video feed going from from a bird box to you know that's got an infrared sensor. So whenever whenever a bird comes in, it starts recording, and you can get some. We've got some. We've seen some of the um, uses of that around the um, around the internet of people who've set this up and made their own um, made their own bird box. We've got um, uh, there's actually a pure Python interface to the camera as well, which is written uh, by a friend of mine in Manchester. Um, which is which is really nice to use and, and a great a great example of a, a community contribution. Um, and we we've got a few resources based around that, such as um, the a push button stop motion one. So where you you can set up a a physical button that will trigger the camera, um, and you can make a a stop motion animation with something like Lego. So there's, there's a whole uh, resource around building that up and understanding how the code works and actually building the, you know, the, the sort of product for, um, for making that, that resource happen. Uh, one of the, we had a poster competition at the, um, the end of last year. People, kids sent in posters of ideas of things they wanted to make and we sent them one of the Google Raspberry Pi kits in, uh, in return. One of the ideas was um, a hamster party cam. They wanted to, this, this young child wanted to, um, See what her hamsters did at night. She's saying they were they were nocturnal. Said so they're, they're probably you know running around and having a party. Um, so uh, so we made the resource based on her idea um, and showed you how you could set up a, a camera to watch to watch the um, to be triggered when the when the hamster wheel went round or when the when the when the hamster was walking around the cage. Um, there's things like Cress egg heads, which is a time lapse of Cress growing out of egg. And then there's some actual sort of computer science stuff. So there's things like a networking resource we, we recently put together, which is a whole series of lessons um, based around learning networking with the Raspberry Pi, which is a lot closer to what a lot of you um, imagine that we, we, you know, we should be doing. 
Um, there's, a, there's a program on Raspberry Pi called Sonic Pi, which is a really interesting project. Uh, it's, it's actually writing music in code. So you can see there's an example here. This is, it's actually based on Ruby, which is a nice step between a visual programming -like, uh, environment like Scratch, where you just drag and drop the blocks, and building up to something where you can do, you have a lot more power like Python. Um, because of Ruby's syntax, there's, there's not as many brackets, and it's not as, um, it's not as um, reliant upon you having the indentation set up in the right way, things like that. Um, this is a really nice way, and it also um, allows you to, um, um, to, rather than a visual representation of your, um, of your code, it's an audible uh, representation, which is, which is really interactive, and uh, can be really good to teach computer science pro um, concepts. So how can you help? So if you're if you you're running a code club or a um, or if, or some, some something like, like an open tech school or something like that, you can use our materials. I, I'd love to see um, them being used. Uh, if you have any contributions, if you've written your own materials or if you've forked one of ours uh, and and added to it, we'd love to have it come back to us. Um, it'd be great to see some contributions from from the community as well. Uh, if you've got a package in, in Debian or, or in PIP, something like that, just, just check it out and see if it, see if it runs on the Raspberry Pi. If, it, if, it would be, if, it, if there's something you could do to, to improve it, that would be, that would be great. There's also a, a network of, of events around, mostly around the UK, and, and there's a few around the world as well called Raspberry Jam. Um, there's actually just one recently being set up in Berlin by a friend of mine. Um, so if, if, you, if you could attend a Raspberry Jam, just to, you know, if you've got a project, show, you know, show, show it off at the Jam. If you, if you can help lend a hand, sort of the teaching aspects, because a lot of children, parents go along and they, they need a bit of guidance. Um, any, any kind of help along at um, one of those Jams would be really, uh, really useful. And if you've, if you've done something with a, with a Pi, you know, um, email me, tell me about it, um, or come and talk to somebody, or, or, or email the foundation. It'd be, it'd be great to, it's always great to hear what people are doing with the Raspberry Pis. I often find people are quite quiet about these things, and they, um, I'll be chatting to somebody for ages, telling them all, all about what we're doing, and then they just say, oh yeah, I, um, yeah, I've got a Raspberry Pi, I, uh, I built a killer robot with it. It's, um, yeah, it's all right, it's not bad. It's, uh, or, or something like, you know, oh, I, um, I set one up that, um, you know, Helps feed children in Africa, and I'm like, whoa, this is amazing! You know, you, know, you need to uh, you need to tell me about this. We can put it on our blog. Um, but another thing, thing you can do to help is just just to buy a Raspberry Pi and, and the compute module. That will be um, that'll be really uh, really helpful because um, if you buy a Raspberry Pi, you're funding our educational mission, um, which is which is a worldwide mission. It's just not just based in the UK. Um, you fund the development of new hardware. So a lot of hackers back in the in the um, original days before this came out, were really excited about it, and they, you know, they wanted a piece of the action. They wanted to get hold of of a Raspberry Pi, and the, the more that the more that we can work on that, the more uh, engineers we have working on new products, the, you know, the the more everyone else will benefit from that. Um, uh, you know, there's there's always work being done on on the current Raspberry Pi and, and future products that um, you know that can be furthered by by our um, our expansion, um, and I'm sure you'd all love to see the next generation of, of Raspberry Pi, um, and we can, you know, we can we can make big big leaps forward in, in that respect. Um, and you're also funding free and open source software by 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 buying Raspberry Pi. We um, we have a lot of contributions towards open source, and um, so we we funded the the port of PyPy Pi to to ARM. Uh, which, if you saw the talk yesterday um, on PyPy, that was that was mentioned there. We funded XBMC to kind of in, improve improve that on on our hardware. Uh, things like LibAV, uh, Pixman, Wayland, and Western. We're working really hard on on the, the, those kind of des desktop environments for that will work better on our hardware and port it, getting those ported and getting. Um, we've got our own um, version of that work being worked on at the moment called Maynard, um, which is which is looking really cool. Um, we've we've developed a lot uh, in um, funded a lot of development of Squeak, the um, the Smalltalk VM, which Scratch runs in, and actually Scratch itself. Um, MIT have moved on from the original version of Scratch, and um, 
um, and have, have moved it to a flash environment. So we're, we're, sti we're stuck on the, the old version, um, but we're actually funding um, development on that itself and, and incorporating a lot, of, um, a lot of cool features that you can do with Raspberry Pi in that, such as GPIO interaction. Um, we've, we've funded WebKit and um, Epiphany is a new browser that we're, we're working on, um, which will be released soon. We also um, been kind of lobbying Broadcom, the, the guys we, um, who, who make the chip that we use, to open source their graphics drivers, because that's something that a lot of people really want to see. Um, we've had a few, a few uh, wins with those over the, over the last two or three years. Um, and earlier this year, we, we put out a $10,000 bounty to the first person to um, port some drivers that they, that they open sourced um, to, to, to work on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and that was one, and that was, that was quite a big, big announcement for us. Um, just um, before I finish, I, I'm going to be doing a US tour next year. Um, so if you're, I've put out this, this map as a sort of vague um, anticipation of my route. Uh, this is going to be from the beginning of August for the next, for, the, for about two or three weeks. Um, I'm trying to stop at any, any hack spaces or any communities or groups. If anyone is in the US uh, or knows anyone in the US who, who might be interested in hearing me speak or, or coming to visit them or anything like that, um, check out the Raspberry Pi website. There's a, there's a call for requests or come and come speak to me or, or, or get in touch. Um, as I say, if, if you've got anything you want to talk to me about, I'm, I'm going to be here afterwards. Um, but also, by all means, send me an email. Check out our, our work on GitHub. Um, and if you've got any projects you want to tell me about, please do email me. So feel free to take a picture of that. Or I've got some cards at the front here if you want to, if you want to grab one as well. Um, so thank you. Uh, we'll take questions. OK, cool. Um, Cheers. Yep. Very nice project. Um, any questions? Oh, a lot. <laughs> we are, uh, have, don't have too much time, but. Hi. Hi. Um, so you mentioned that uh, you have ongoing development. Um, what's going to happen next with the Raspberry Pi? So I know that there was a BBC Master and then the Archimedes and so on and so forth. So uh, what's, what's the next thing in the pipeline, the next cool uh, piece of hardware? And um, I realize that you're probably going to say, I can't tell you. I or can't can tell you. you. <laughs> well, we, we only just brought out a new model, so I wouldn't expect anything immediately. But it's it's more of a long term, um, a long term thing talking about. I mean, Eben did reference Raspberry Pi two, in in the blog post announcing the the B plus. But he, he, you know, we're not talking anything imminent. Um, there, you know, there, there will be a future revision. But and the B plus is the um, is the final, um, the final revision of the original Raspberry Pi. So we won't be on, you know, the current set of hardware past this. But this will be a very long term supported device because as I say, there are. Three million of the the current Raspberry Pis out there, um, and we've we've no interest on on you know in leaving anyone behind. Well, um, <clears throat> what about compatibility with the one one laptop per child? Uh, one laptop per child. So, what do you mean by compatibility? Uh, what what can be done in common with the, with that uh, oh, okay. lab, uh, project? Okay, you mean in in terms of the project? Um, so that was a really cool project, um, which, um, you know, and a lot of the um, the aims of that project were very similar to our own. Um, the Raspberry Pi is a lot more extensible in terms of what you what you can do with it, with the um, with the physical hardware and the, and the physical computing elements. Um, I'm not sure really what there, what there is to be said about compatibility in terms of. I don't know if there's a still uh, a, a sort of team working on that project, but. I don't know if you've got anything specific to, to say. We could, we, I'd love to, to talk to you about it. OK, one more question. Um, what sort of software comes bundled with the Raspberry Pi? OK, so our, major, uh, our main supported distribution is uh, called Raspbian, which is a community port of the um, ARM uh, Debian. Um, and that's the one that we, we generally support. We do have a, a, a piece of software which runs off the SD card and gives you a, a selection of different operating systems. But um, I'll just talk about uh, Raspbian. So um, it's, it's a full-fledged Linux distribution. So you, you do get a full desktop environment. Uh, a lot of things are installed by default. 
um, and a lot, well, anything that's available in Debian and the Debian archives on ARM is, is supported generally. Um, but yeah, by default you get um, a lot of, pr plenty of programming languages, you get Python, Java, Ruby, things like that. Um, and a lot of packages are available f for, through Python as well. Um, Scratch is bundled, Sonic Pi, um, the, the GPIO libraries, for instance, things like that. Um, the, the, the camera, the camera interface, um, basically anything you can get in, in Debian as well um, is, is available. Okay, thank you very much again. Thank you.